did you know there is a hidden community of evil thriving on a small island of the coast of West Africa? What if I told you that this group speaks a unique blend of languages, including their ancestral Igbo, Spanish, and local African tongues? Can you imagine a place where Nigerian traditions mingle with Spanish colonial history, creating a cultural tapestry unlike anywhere else in the world? Welcome to Bioko Island, Equatorial Guinea, home to a remarkable Igbo community with a story that would challenge everything you thought you knew about African migration and cultural identity. How did these Ndiwo end up over thousands of kilometers away from their ancestral homeland in Nigeria? Kedu, the forces of history that brought them to this Spanish-speaking nation, and how have they managed to preserve their heritage while adapting to a new home? Well, we'll unravel these mysteries and more, but first, Let's start with some mind-blowing facts. To truly understand it, we need to go back in time. And not just decades, but centuries as well. The year is 1884. European powers have gathered in Berlin, Germany, for a conference that would change the face of Africa forever. With the stroke of a pen, the fate of millions was sealed. Nigeria fell under British control, while Equatorial Guinea became a Spanish colony. Manachelo, wow, the story doesn't start here. To truly understand the presence of Ndibu in Equatorial Guinea, we need to go even further back. Long before the Berlin Conference, another dark chapter of history was already reshaping African demographics. The transatlantic slave trade. There she goes again. Manayani Kweziopu. All the time, regardless how old, regardless how repeated it sounds. Makanezi Okubundo. For centuries, millions of Africans were forcibly uprooted and scattered across the Americas and the Caribbean. Ndibo were among those most affected by this brutal trade. Many were taken from their homes in what is now southeastern Nigeria and shipped across the Atlantic. In a twist of history irony, some descendants of these enslaved Igbos would later return to Africa, settling in places like Sierra Leone, Liberia, and yes, Equatorial Guinea. Now, fast forward to the early 20th century, the world was changing rapidly and Africa was no exception. The European powers, having divided the continent among themselves, began large-scale economic projects in their new colonies. In Equatorial Guinea, the Spanish saw great potential in the fertile soil of Bioko Island, then known as Fernando Po. They envisioned vast cocoa and coffee plantations that would bring wealth to the empire. But there was one problem. They needed Ndegalo Diolo. This is where our story intersects with that of the Igbo people. Known for their hard work and adaptability, many Ndibo saw an opportunity in the Spanish colony. They left their homes in British-controlled Nigeria, crossing those arbitrary borders drawn in Berlin to seek better economic prospects in Equatorial Guinea. Another incredible event shook their world. The 1960s brought independence to many African nations, but for Nigerians and Ndibo, 
it also brought civil war. The Nigerian Civil War, also known as the Biafran War, raged from 1967 all the way to 1970. The eastern region of Nigeria, dominated by Ndibu, attempted to secede, declaring itself the Republic of Biafra. You know the history, you know the rest. And so in the dark of this hour, Bioko Island in Equatorial Guinea became a beacon of hope. Relief agencies used the island as a base for fights into Biafra, bringing desperately needed supplies. This humanitarian corridor saved countless lives and further strengthened the connection between Ndimu and Equatorial Guinea. When the war ended, some Igbos chose to remain in Equatorial Guinea, joining those who had come earlier. They put down roots, intermarried with local populations, and began to forge a unique identity. Yet, distinctly Equatorial Guinea. I'm no normal that Igbo language is made official in Equatorial Guinea as well. It is the number three recognized official language in Equatorial Guinea. Now we understand that there are elements and occasions that led to the migration or to the scattering of Ndibo in Equatorial Guinea. Mind you, during the time that they were all dropped in Gabon and other African countries during the Biafran War, know ye that all those areas were all one region. It wasn't even called Equatorial Guinea at the time. They were all under the Gabonese jurisdiction. And so, before the further divisions kept going on and on. We'll be back shortly. Just like we have in Nigeria today, a lot of Igbo communities and states and regions had been splitted and they joined other parts like the West, the South and other parts of Nigeria. Now the saying that is making more sense every day. It is reality. It is so true. Manke circumstances that we couldn't control. Manke events that unfolded unexpectedly and many more. If a Batalo IG made videos as this, it's because we are agitating for the reunion and the oneness, togetherness of Ndibo. Naga into extinction. We have to put a stop to it by releasing documentations as this one. We are going further and further and further. With time in the nearest future, we're going to travel. We're going to have people talk. We're going to have people bring up histories that they were told as children. I'm referring to Ndibo. And even extended to other African ethnicity. But here is actually where it gets really interesting. Iban Hassan Equatorial Guinea has evolved over the generations. It has taken on its own flavor, influenced by the languages around it. This linguistic evolution is a living example of how cultures adapt and change. At a point of pride for many, but it also represents challenges. We've touched on this, if you remember, how wars, slavery, 
so many things can contribute to people settling. I got a drink that'll make you feel alive Sipping on fruits and red juice It's gonna take you high Tropical flavor in every single drop When you taste it, you won't wanna stop It's like a burst of sunshine in a glass Fruits and red juice And no one is on the wolf, ma And you won't deny me anywhere we go We make it our home There's a reason for that. It is because our DNA is so unique. Our DNA is all about humanity. Our DNA it is all about the nature, the way it is and should be. That is why we can call home anywhere. That is why we can buy up a property, develop it and call it home anywhere we find ourselves. Therefore, We didn't have a challenge dwelling among other races or people because we see everyone as one. As we near the end of our journey on this particular episode because this is like an intro, let's reflect on what we've learned. The evil equatorial Guineans show us that it's possible to honor one's roots while fully embracing a new home. the remind us that cultures are not static but dynamic and ever evolving their journey also highlights the often overlooked connections between different parts of africa it reminds us that the continent's history is complex and interconnected with migration and cultural exchange playing crucial roles long before and after european colonization As we leave the shores of Bioko Island, we carry with us the lessons of the Igbo people, the lessons of resilience, adaptability and the power of maintaining one's cultural roots even as we branch out into new lands. But perhaps most importantly, the story of Ndibo in Equatorial Guinea reminds us of the power of community despite all the challenges they faced. They've maintained their sense of identity and belonging. They've created a home away from home. Well, in a world that often seeks to divide us, Ndibo of Equatorial Guinea stand as a testament to the power of cultural bridge building. They remind us to continue to challenge ourselves to do what is right, to value humanity, to promote peace and cohabitation that will help each and every one of us and the people around us thrive regardless of where they come from huko kwa kwa hamnono oh anize ni gemonte dika ina baraka toka na comment section akabu kwa mwaduno splendor ngozi and god bless you